All right. Good afternoon. We are on to another edition of HZ um, of Export Business Financing, and we are discussing Part Twelve. HZ of Export Business Financing, Part Twelve. We started this conversation almost <clears throat> a week now. And we discussed several topics. And the objective of this conversation is to ensure that individuals who are looking for financing from banks are able to secure financing, are doing what they're supposed to do to be able to have access to such finance. Olai Wala Abiodu, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. Olani Yidayo, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. So we started discussing it instead of export business financing and the objective of this conversation basically is to help individuals to be able to secure financing for their trade transaction and also to help banks to be able to go ahead and finance trade transaction without the fear of losing depositors fund. And for individuals who probably want to just be an investor to be able to invest safely Sabra Yunis, thank you very much for, watch, for joining us. Good afternoon. So we started talking, I mean, we discussed so many things since we started. Uh, we discussed application, we discussed the need for character, we discussed the need for good document, um, we discussed the need for uh, having representative abroad, we've talked about guarantees, we talked about the need for you to have good history, and the history is very critical for a bank to take informed decision because you have just demonstrated that, look, you can really perform. We've also talked about um, um, credibility, character, and competence. Um, we've talked about a number of things. Actually, we talked about jurisdiction also. Jurisdiction. 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 Now, we're going to be discussing today the issue of purchase order. The issue of purchase order. And the fact that purchase order is very important and very critical in your trade transaction. Purchase order is very important and very critical in your trade transaction. As a matter of fact, I'll be talking about what I call the 10, um, the 10 P's that can be derived from a purchase order. The 10 elements or information that your purchase order communicate to whoever it is that is financing. This is the thing we'll be talking about today. Purchase order is also called sales contract. It's also called export contract. And it's an international sales agreement which should be signed by both buyer and seller before a legally binding international trade can take place between them. So to have a legally binding international trade transaction, there should be an agreement. An agreement between the buyer and the seller. An agreement between the buyer and the seller. This agreement is called sales contract. This agreement is called export contract. Some call it purchase order. Whichever name you call it. It's an international sales contract. Or international contract for the sales of goods and services. The international contract for the sales of goods and services. Getting this contract, therefore, is a very crucial step in export financing. In export transaction generally, Usman Kabiru, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. Getting this contract is very important and very critical in any, in any transaction, export transaction. If you do not get this contract, then it becomes very, very difficult for you to be able to secure an export financing transaction. So, in going to secure export finance transaction, remember our topic is A to Z of export business financing. In going to secure an export finance transaction, remember, you need to have a contract. You need to have a, a sales contract, you need to have a purchase order, you need to have a firm commitment of the buyer who wants to buy that goods from you. Now, this is important because if the bank is funded, the bank needs to be sure that at the end of the day, someone is willing to pay for this transaction. 
at the end of the day, someone is willing to pay for this transaction. The bank must be able to convince himself of that. And that's why export contract become very important. This document highlights the role and responsibility of all parties involved. So the, the basic um, function of the contract is it highlights the roles and responsibilities of the parties involved. What's the role of the bank if you are going to get a bank involved? What's the role of the exporter? What's the role of the importer as the buyer and the seller? And another party, maybe the inspection agent, maybe the insurance, wherever it is you are bringing in, even though the agreement is between two people, those two people have other parties that are going to be engaging to do one thing or the other for them in the transaction. A banker should not just demand that an individual funding and transaction should not just demand for the contract as requisite document, should also be able to review it and identify the loopholes that can jeopardize the finance of the export transaction. So one skill a financier must possess is to be able to review a contract and be able to identify the issues with that contract. One skill any export financier must acquire is to be able to review export contract and be able to identify challenges, loopholes in that export contract. If you know the role of export contract in export financing, then it becomes easier for you to be able to identify the loopholes. If you know the role of export contract in export financing, you'll be able to identify and review the contract and then be able to identify the loopholes so that if there are things that need to be put in place, then you can get that done. And as an export financier, you must ensure, as a matter of fact, you must ensure, you must ensure that at any point in time, the contract that you are financing is well reviewed, the likely issues around it are identified, and any perceived risk is mitigated and any perceived risk is mitigated. Like I said, these documents highlight the roles and responsibilities of all parties involved in a typical export transaction. The loop, a, loop, I mean, um, a banker should not just demand for the contract just as a rule, just as a checklist, but should also be able to review it identify the loophole that could jeopardize the export finance transaction and block those loopholes and make necessary recommendation on the amendment needed to be done on that contract before eventually you go ahead to finance. Now, a typical purchase order or sales contract should be able to serve the following functions. Like I said, if you know the functions, of the contract, and you're able to ensure the contract provide that information for you, it helps you to be able to identify the loopholes. For example, if one of these functions is not seen, if you cannot see clearly how this contract state that payments will be made, then you demand for a clear statement on the contract that states clearly how the payment will be made at the end of the transaction. If the contract did not clearly state the paperwork involved, then when you review and you're able to spot that because you are looking for the functions that it relate to paperwork, the information it provides as it relates to paperwork, because you are looking out for that, you will be able to ensure that at the end of the day, that function is fulfilled in that contract. Wale Adeyemo, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. You are able to ensure that that happens. So what is the first role or functions of a sales contract in export financing? Premise. Premise. A contract forms the basis for the request. A contract forms the basis for the request. A contract form the basis for the request. So when you um, 
have a sales contract and that form part of the request to the bank, that is the basis. So if you say, I need funding for this, the bank will say, why? The contract will say, this is the reason why I need funding for so and so. I need funding to supply one container of clothing, one container of African fabrics, one container of Agbada, like when Nigeria was in Agbada Challenge, one container of T-shirts, one container of boxers, one container of um, whatever wear, or shoes, or bags. The contract already saying that the quantity to be supplied, that form the basis, that form the premise for your financing request. What that means is that you cannot request for financing from a bank if there is no contract. Because the whole essence of requesting for the financing is because of the contract. The whole essence, the whole basis, the foundation, the premise of your request is the contract. So if the foundation is having issue, the bank will not go on. So the body bank even begin to review the merit of your request. The contract should even give them an insight into, do we even want to go ahead with this transaction? Do you want to go ahead with it? Why? Because if there are questions that cannot be answered on the contract, then we we'll even go ahead and begin to see how we can structure it. Basic questions should be answered, and I call them the 10 Ps. Number one is the premise. So that you have a contract, then we can begin to review other things in the contract. Number two is preparation. Contract provide the basis for pre pre uh, provide the Give us an idea of the level of preparation expected. It helps you and the banker to know when the preparation for production or procurement should commence. It helps us to know when the preparation for production or procurement should commence. It helps us to know when the preparation or production, preparing for production or procurement should commence. Let me give you an instance. We are currently in the cashew season. So let's say you are doing commodities. Or you are going to ship, for example, you are going to ship out three containers of uh, pap. Okay, let's use pap. Since our focus in this uh, conversation is finished, brother, let's use pap. Pap, red pap, brown ogi. We ship that regularly to the UK. So that may be an example. I'm going to ship a container load of this to the UK. Sorry, three containers. Let's assume the buyer says I should ship within 30 days, three containers. And the buyer is an SME, sorry, the manufacturer is an SME. He can only produce a container in a month. A container in a month. Ogbemudia emunjeze. Thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. You can only provide a container in a month, and I need to do three containers in 30 days. Clearly, the contract is telling me that, look, this thing is not workable. I won't be able to achieve this objective. I won't be able to do this request. I can likewise drop that contract or amend the contract to be three months for delivery. Because my supplier can only deliver one container in a month for the pap. So what I'm saying in essence is that when we look at the demand of the contract, vis-a-vis -vis the procurement or production of that goods, we will be able to know if that request is workable, is possible. Osho Tio Benga, Tio Philos Benga, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. We are going to be able to know if it is workable. Why? Because the demand being placed via the contract is showing that this good must be shipped in 30 days. But you know what? This good cannot be shipped in 30 days. Because it can, only be pro it can only be able to procure 30 metric tons. Because, let's assume, sorry, 
about 20 metric tons in a container. So the, the buyer is looking for 60 metric tons, or let's say 60,000 cartons. And 20,000 cartons can be produced in a month. And the contract is saying shipment must be done within a month. So clearly, if you are going to be raising financing for this transaction, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to meet up with the demand of the buyer. Very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. It's going to be very difficult because what the buyer is demanding for is not workable. What the buyer is demanding for is not workable. As far as the contract is concerned. So one of the functions of the contract, number one, is premise. That's the basis for request. Number two is preparation. It gives us an idea of the level of preparation. Number three is planning. 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 It helps the bank to monitor the planning of shipment with the shipping line. After the good has been produced, we need to plan. We are planning not just the production, we are also planning the shipment itself. So, we want to know if you are going to produce this good, let's say you are going to be able to produce it in 30 days. When will it be shipped? What, which of the vessels are you going with? There is something called shipping line schedule. So if you register with the shipping line, they can send their schedule every month to you. So you have an idea of the vessel coming into Nigeria. You have an idea of the port where they are going to be discharging. You have an idea of the port where they are going to be loading. You have an idea of when they will be parting. And probably an idea of when they will get to their destination. So you have what is called the shipping line schedule. The shipping line schedule. The shipping line schedule. Adolphus Ali, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. The shipping line schedule. You have the shipping line schedule. The shipping line schedule help you to plan when the shipment will be done. So number one, you have the premise. Contract gives us an idea of the basis, the basis, from the basis and foundation for your request. Number two, a sales contract, a sales agreement in international trade provide, help us to have an idea of the level of preparation that needs to be done. And number three, it gives us an insight into how the planning should go. Number four, it helps us to know how payment will be made. Number one, premise. Number two, preparation. Number three, planning. And number four, payment. 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 It shows that the bank that you are sourcing the fund from, what, when, who, how of the payment on that shipment? What is expected as payment? When the payment is to be made? Who is making the payment? And how the payment is going to be made? So the contract gives us an insight into how the payment is going to be made. Now remember you are going to be sourcing funds from the bank. If you are going to be sourcing funds from the bank, the bank wants to know information around payment, like I said. Since contract form the foundation of your request, it gives an insight into the credibility of your request. It helps the bank to take some decision because of the role that contract plays in financing your transaction. And I said role number one is premise. We've talked about that. Role number two is preparation. We've talked about that. Role number three is planning. We've talked about that. Role number four is payment. It shows what is the payment method, what is the payment terms, when will payment be made, who is making the payment. At that point, the bank will know if there is a guarantee for payment. At that point, the bank will know if there is a guarantee for payment. If there is no guarantee for payment, the bank will begin to think of, okay, what can we do to be able to mitigate the risk of not getting paid? If there is no guarantee for payment, the bank will begin to look for how to mitigate that risk. And the bank will be taking decisions if they're going to fund. And even if it's an individual that wants to fund also, that's why as a financier, you need to also learn about this. Because as a financier, you're practically a banker, actually. And you should ask questions. You should ask informed questions. But the level of question you're going to be able to ask is depend likely on the information you have. Which is why as a financier, you should have information. Ajayo Luatosin, thank you very much for joining 
Good afternoon. It's very important that you ask questions. You know, some people just finance. I mean, you know, they've heard about the fact that my money should work for me. And so because my money should work for me, I need to fund, I need to finance uh, different transactions. It's very important you finance. It's very important your money work for you. It's very important. But you should finance what you know and understand. You should be able to ask critical questions from the person you are financing. Apart from the credibility of the person, apart from the character of the person, and apart from the competence of the person, you should be competent enough to know exactly what could go wrong and ask questions. What are the things? Whenever you are funny, you should be always asking what could go wrong, what could go wrong. If this happened, what is the mechanism put in place to mitigate it? And that's the way a bank thinks. So sometimes, like, the bank is thinking the transaction will fail. Not because the bank wants the transaction to fail, but the bank is saying, what if this is what we have done to prevent it? What if this is what we have done? What if the quality of the good goes bad? What are we doing to prevent that? What if the quality of the good delivered is not good enough? What if the quantity is not good enough? What if we don't get buyers? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? You should answer that question. Adolfo said very correct. Yes, you should answer that question. You should be able to answer the question. If you are not be able to answer the question, then it makes it difficult for you to be able to secure that financing. If you are not able to, be able to answer the question, so the contract should answer that question. The contract should be clear enough to answer the question. Number five, pricing. The contract communicate pricing. The contract show the agreed price. And the financier we know, at this agreed price, this are this the proposal you gave us, saying this is the amount you are going to be buying. Now we have seen the amount you are going to be selling. And these are the other costs you are going to incur. Is this transaction going to be profitable? Is this transaction going to be profitable? If we now remove the interest on the facility you are sourcing from the bank, are you still going to have profit? Many banks don't want to finance a transaction which will leave you with nothing after they've removed their interest. Because that means you are working for them. You won't come back again. They don't want to fund it. So that means there is enough profit for the bank to show interest. There is enough profit for the bank to be able to fund. So the bank wants you to have 10, 15, 20% after they've removed their own profit, their own uh, interest. If it's not profitable, the bank is not interested. So the bank wants to know the pricing. So the contract should be very, very clear on the pricing. Number one, the premise. Number two, the preparation. These are the functions of a contract. Today we are discussing, we are focusing on sales contract or purchase order, and we are still discussing all you need to know, A to Z of export business financing. All you need to know. As far as export business finance is concerned, both on the part of the financier, the bank, the investor, and on the part of the exporter. So it's for the exporter, for export investor, and the financier. Number one, the contract provides premise, basis, foundation for the transaction. Yes, Adolphus Ali said that's where many people get it wrong. You are very correct. You know, the, I'm going to be discussing, maybe after this, I'm going to be discussing costing. I'm going to be discussing costing. I, I think that, let me check. I think that's one of the things um, we should be talking about very soon. Let me check. Um, I'm trying to check my list after discussing A to Z of export business financing. Yes, it's one of the things we'll be talking about. Costing, pricing, and costing. That's uh, export, pri export, export costing and pricing. It's one of the major challenges, really. And reason is this. I'm trying to ensure I know that down. Um, the reason is this, people, you know, you can't price when you don't know the cost. You can't price when you don't know the cost. So, you're very right, Adolphus, that that's where many people get it wrong. They, you know, in a typical day, if people call me for trade transaction, hello, Dele, I, I, I have this contract. No, hello, Dele, I want to export. Most of the time, they ask for buyer. Most of the time, they ask for buyers. Now, Another time, they don't just ask for buyers, they ask for what price should I quote. So when someone asks me, what price should I quote, and I ask them, what is the cost of your product? I have an idea of the other costs that you incur for documentation and shipment and the port charges and the like, but I don't have an idea of your, the cost of your product. So if you give me the price of your product, 
I can give you an idea of the cost you will incur for logistics, for documentation, for shipment, and then we can add that to the cost of your product, and then we can have an idea of what your pricing should be. So I'm going to be talking about pricing. Even in the course of this financing, one of the things we'll be talking about is costing, actually. Costing. So when we get there, that's still under the A to Z of SO business financing. One of the things we're talking about is pricing. Maybe in the course of this week, I'm sure before the end of this week, we will finish this series. I said this series last week. Before the end of this week, we will finish this series. We are on part 11 now. And I will be talking about pricing. So I'm sure I don't force will be able to get some of these questions answered. Pricing. So the contract should state pricing. The contract should say pricing. Prince uh, Chi Chibukem, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. The contract should state pricing. If we are not able to get pricing clearly on the contract, then that's a problem. And you know what? When the contract is stated on the on, when the price is stated on the contract, it will also state the inco terms. Inco terms is international commercial terms. It will state where does your cost end, where does that of the buyer starts from. For example, my price can be hundred dollar per carton, FOB Lagos. FOB is free on board. FOB means as soon as the good is on board the vessel, my cost ended. So in calculating my cost, I must factor in the delivery terms. The delivery terms talk about where my cost end, where I will deliver the goods, where the importer will take over the goods, the risk and the cost of moving the goods. And that must reflect in the pricing. Then number six, packaging. The contract helps the banker to know how to package the facility. It shows how the good also should be packaged. So the contract will give us two things. It helps us to know how the good is to be packaged by the exporter. It also helps the financier to know how to structure, how to package the financing. How to structure the dynamics of the financing. How to package the financing because of the nature of the goods, the nature of the payment method, the nature of even when payment is going to be made and documentation involved. That will define the packaging. Number seven, protection. Remember, number one, a contract provides the premise for funding. Number two, a contract provides the preparation for funding. Number three, a contract provides the planning for funding. Number four, a contract provides the payment terms for funding. Number five, a contract provides the pricing detail for funding. Number six, a contract provides the detail of how the loan is to be packaged. And number seven, protection, protection, protection. Through contract, the bank is able to know the liabilities and the responsibilities of the exporter. If the bank is funding, the bank takes over that liability. If the bank is funded, the bank is sharing from that liability. So the bank is interested in that liability. Deltos DMS, thank you very much for joining. Good afternoon. The bank is interested in that liability. So the contract gives us an idea of the liability and the responsibilities of the exporter and hence the risk that the bank is going to be facing. Always remember, bank is not in the business of taking risk. Banks want to minimize the risk as much as possible. Banks is not in the business. Banks are not in the business of taking risk. Banks want to minimize their risk as much as possible. Banks want to minimize their risk. So you must demonstrate to the bank how you intend to mitigate the risk. That means you have anticipated the risk. That means you have anticipated the risk. The fact that you have anticipated the risk give the bank a comfort. Show the bank you're serious and make the bank to be interested in dealing with you. So the contract gives us an idea of liabilities. For example, if the King Cotan says the, the, the good will be delivered to your warehouse, we know your risk and liabilities and references end your warehouse. If the, if the Queen Cotan says you have to deliver the goods to the port before your risk ends, that gives us an insight into your liabilities and responsibilities. Hence, the liability and responsibility of the exporter. Then the Paperwork, the paperwork, the premise, the preparation, the planning, the payment, the pricing, the packaging, the protection, and the paperwork. The paperwork is talking about the document that the exporter needs to provide for him to be paid. 
the transport document given by the shipping line, the bill of lading, the invoice, the parking list, the relevant certificate, certificate of origin, certificate of quality, different certificates. The relevant certificates. The relevant certificate. So, contract itemizes the documentation requirement for payment by the buyer and the buyer's bank. By the buyer and the buyer's bank. It's possible the buyer also is taking a loan from his bank and his bank will expect some document to be able to pay you. It's possible the buyer is taking a loan from the bank and the buyer will expect some document to pay you. So you must... Now, what that means is that at the point of signing this agreement, you will have been able to check all the paperwork required and be sure you can get those documents in your country before signing the agreement. And be sure you can get those documents in your country before signing the agreement. Be sure that you can get those documents in your country before going ahead to sign the agreement. Then the problems. The problems. It helps the banker to envisage the likely challenges to, and put in place measures to combat it. A contract gives us an insight into the likely problem we encounter in this transaction. If it is perishable goods, like flour, you know, uh, on, on Thursday, we normally have a radio program on Inspiration 92.93.2 FM. Sorry, 92.3 FM, rather. Inspiration 92.3 FM by 5 p.m. every Thursday. We have the Import Export Helpline. You know, we have the Import Export platform on Facebook every day, morning and evening. And we have the Import Export Helpline on radio every week, Thursday, 5 p.m. on Inspiration in Lagos. So we're discussing this week how Kenya make over a billion dollar exporting cut flowers, roses, to Europe. Cut flowers to Europe. And we're talking about the fact that this is a one commodity, one item, and it's a perishable item, and it's generating billions of dollars for a country. And that's the reason why we are doing the Facebook Live, the fact that anybody can export. Anybody and everybody. Remember, the world is a trade center. You must be trading something in our world. You are either trading your skill or you're trading a service, or trading a product. You must be trading something to earn a living. A nation must trade to survive. Nigeria is trading in oil. Oil is a wasting asset. We must be trading in value-added product. That's the essence of why we are doing this Facebook Live. These are training we charge for, but we are doing it free of charge to be able to get the message out there. And that's why you have access to all the free the video, pre video, um, pre previous video free of charge on the Facebook page on my timeline, or you go on the YouTube, search my name, you'll find it there on the YouTube. What are we trying to do to get message out for people to be able to understand that we must trade and everybody can be involved? Because you are trading with billions of people in the world. There are over 7 billion people in the world. And we must trade. If we do not trade, we are going nowhere as a nation. Africa is generating, con con contributing less than 3% of total world trade. Europe, 500 billion people, contributing 33%. Africa, 1.2 billion people. Europe is 500 million. Contributing 33%. Africa is 1.2 billion. Contributing less than 3%. Because of our low productivity. Very low productivity. Very, very low productivity. But we can do change. I mean, there can be... We can, people need to have information, actually. Because you really cannot go more than... You can't do more than the information you have. That's why we're making the information also available for you out there. So, paperwork. Problem. And lastly, the products. The product, the contract gives us an idea of the product. Samuel Adesino, thank you very much for joining and good afternoon. So it gives us the product. When I know the product, I have an idea of the season. If it's commodity, when is the season? The product you want to ship also give me how feasible is it? How feasible will you be able to? Will you be able, will you feasible for you to be able to ship this item? Can we source it in Nigeria? What quantity can you sell within the time? Is it available in that quantity? Can you add value to this level? The product being demanded for in your contract also help the bank to take an informed decision on the request you are placing on the bank. So today we have discussed 
A to Z of S for Business Financing, Part 11. So meaning, if you are joining us for the first time, you have missed Part 1 to Part 10. Sorry, today is Part 12, rather. You have missed Part 1 to Part 11. Like I said, it's on the Facebook page. Check the timeline. Or you go on YouTube, search A to Z of S for Business Financing on YouTube. You see my channel and you can get, lead to, get to listen to the previous edition. Remember, this is Import Export Platform on Facebook Live, brought to you by 3 Team Pest Trade Academy. And my name is Dele Ayemi. But as a roundoff, I will just run through quickly through what we discussed today, the functions of export contract in export financing. Number one, premise. The basis for loan requests. Number two, preparation. Help us to know the level of preparation required. Number three, planning. Help us to know the shipping line, the, 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 the planning towards the shipping line to be used and when the shipment is to be done. Number four, payment. Who is making the payment? How is the payment going to be made? Number five, pricing. How much are you going to sell? Number six, packaging. How is the loan going to be packaged? How is the product going to be packaged? Number seven, protection. What is the level of protection and liability and responsibility? Number, seven, number eight, paperwork. What are the documents you need to send to the buyer to get your payment? Number nine, problems. What are the likely challenges in this program, in this uh, financing, or in this shipment? And lastly, product. Thank you very much for joining us again this afternoon. My name is Mendela Yemibo. We'll be coming up in the evening again. By 7 p.m., we'll be up again discussing A to Z of Export Business Financing, Part 13. Good afternoon and happy Sunday.